Holy fuck, it's been like three years or something at this point, but it's back. Welcome everybody to Impro at Cooking with Dopefish. In this episode, what I'm gonna teach you is how to fillet a fish. Kind of. The actual lesson is something more akin to don't be afraid to try new things. You'll see why in a second. Since it's been a while, and I'm sure there will be new people watching this, let's reiterate what impro means. It has three meanings. First of all, I'm pro at cooking with dopefish. Simple enough. Then it's improvise at cooking with dopefish. Because that's kind of my style and I feel like that's the best philosophy for cooking. And then the most important one is improve at cooking with dopefish. Hopefully I'll be able to teach you guys a few things, but I also want to improve my own skill set. So if you see any mistakes I make or just have some advice, please post a comment. I'll be sure to read them. So what we've got here is a perch or a European perch or an English perch. Um, we don't use that name for it in Sweden. It's called an abborre. It's very common in lakes around here. It's kind of a traditional food fish. You don't really get it at the supermarket, so you kind of have to fish it yourself. My brother caught this one, actually. We were out ice fishing. I did catch one myself, but it was so small we just threw it back. This one's also rather small, but at least there's a little bit of meat on it. I am by no means an experienced fisher. This was actually the first fish I ever cooked. I mean, the first fish fish with the head on it and everything. Not a fillet, but an actual fish. So I had to learn how to do it, and you'll get to learn with me. So after a bit of watching YouTube videos and Googling, I decided to try to butterfly this fish. You could also just skin it and fillet it, but since the fish was so small and I'm so inexperienced, I thought I'd basically ruin it if I did that. So, step one. Since we're gonna cook it with the skin on, we need to remove the scales. Descaling the fish looked super easy in all the videos I'd watched, but, oh god, it took a lot of trial and error. Look at this slippery fuck. I just couldn't get a good grip on it, so I had to try something else. Meh, paper towels to the rescue. With them, I actually managed to get a grip of this fucking fish, and I'm still doing things terribly wrong, but there are scales being removed, so, um, progress? There was this big clump of scales up here that just wouldn't let go and I was afraid if I applied more pressure I'd just cut through the meat so I tried using the blunt end and it didn't really work either. Using this method I actually did get most of the scales off the fish eventually but it was not a good technique. So I decided to switch to a smaller knife and, well, I could control it better so it was a bit easier to use. The results were still quite bad. I finally realized that I should have removed these fins a long time ago. They're just getting in the way. So I grabbed my kitchen shears and just cut them off. Except I still leave some of the fins on the fish for some reason. I should have just cut them all off except for like the tail one. A good pair of kitchen scissors or shears that you can use while cooking is kind of undervalued. I kind of scoffed at it until I got a pair and they're great. There's a lot of places you can use them that you don't even think about and well they're just kind of useful to have. So after several hours of this, there are now scales everywhere in my kitchen, but I think maybe one side is kind of done. It actually isn't. We get to see that later. And I decided to try the next side with my newfound knowledge. Hopefully it'll be a bit better, easier and faster this time. Alright, so, paper towel, the fish won't slip. And then, you put a shitload more pressure than you think into it. I'm using the blunt side to begin with, just to sort of loosen it up a little bit. And I was fucking pushing the shit out of that fish. And, as you can see, it was working. Also, as you can see, there's a weird box on the right side of the screen. Uh, just ignore that. I had to use a weird camera setup, and uh, trying to crop it out didn't really work. So instead of just having black there, I'll just keep the box in. It looks kinda cool anyway, don't you think? It's almost as if it's intentional. 
I mean, it's totally intentional, guys. It's um, decoration. Yeah. So I switch over to the sharp side of the knife and try to get the rest of these scales off the fish. And it's working! There are scales flying everywhere. I needed to clean my floor after I was done because there were fish scales all over it. But the important thing is they weren't on the fish anymore. And you know what they say about fish scales, right? You can't tune a fish. So I decided to give the fish a once over, just rubbing against the grain, seeing if there were any scales left and I couldn't feel any. I was wrong. It only took like 15 to 20 minutes. The second side was a lot faster than the first one and I'm sure if I ever do it again it will be faster still. As we say in Sweden, you more you do something, the to better you get at it. With the scales gone it was time to actually get to cutting. The first cut I was gonna make was gonna go from the gills onto the spine or the backbone of the fish. Now if you're not filming yourself cooking, there's absolutely no reason why you should ever hold your knife this way. I was kind of trying to let you guys see what I was doing, but it was just preventing me from doing anything myself. So we'll change to an angle that is slightly less good for you, but a lot better for me. Now you really should be using a fillet knife for this. Uh, they look like this. I used to have one, but I guess it didn't come with me in the move and I can't find it anywhere, so I'm gonna have to buy a new one. I definitely recommend you use one if you have one, it's gonna be much easier. You see that I have a bit of trouble actually cutting through here, because this knife isn't, like, it isn't sharp at the end, it doesn't have a point like a fillet knife does. Now, don't get me wrong, you don't actually need a fillet knife, but if you happen to have one, or a boning knife, go ahead and use it, it's what they're for. But really, any kitchen knife will do, it's just gonna be a little bit harder. And there we go, I finally get the cut down. I just needed to actually pierce it with the tip of the knife and actually apply some force, so lesson learned. Next up, we want to find the backbone and then we're gonna press our knife against it and just cut along it all the way down towards the tail. I decided to switch over to an actual sharp knife and also a shorter one so I get a bit more control over what I'm doing. I'm just pressing the back of the knife down towards the spine and cutting along it. This is where a fillet knife would be really helpful because they are sort of bendy and really helps you get really flat against the backbone. Well, it seems like I've done a decent job at least. Now, when we get to the tail here, we can just cut straight through and then just slice up because there isn't going to be any guts in there we need to worry about. <clears throat> we can just slice straight through and then up. Straight through. Ah. Oh. God, this was a lot more trouble than it was supposed to be. Again, a fillet knife would be helpful, they have a bit of a sharper point so you can just pierce through. I also had to keep my fingers out of harm's way while also showing it to the camera. It was difficult, but eventually I managed to get through. Alright, so in hindsight I probably shouldn't have used this technique, but I did make sure my fingers weren't in harm's way still. I could have slipped or something even though I was being careful. It was a bit of a stupid risk to take, but I really needed to get through that skin. And with that done, we're just gonna keep our blade flat against the backbone and cut that fillet out. Going all the way down to the belly but without going through it since we're gonna butterfly this one. Try to avoid sawing through the fillet, try to get long clean slices when you're doing this. That just makes for a nicer fillet without all of these sloppy edges to it. Eventually you're gonna make your way into the stomach of the fish where all of its guts are. Try to avoid piercing the things in there. Obviously it's not the end of the world if you do, you're gonna clean the fillets anyway, but you don't want to bile all over your cutting board. Now I have to say, I'm not a squeamish type, but there was still something slightly icky about doing this to the fish. The fact that it was staring at me with its dead face, there was something slightly uh, macabre about it. It didn't really bother me that much, but I could totally understand why it would bother other people and they'd not want to do it. Still, I mean, try to get over yourself if you find this icky. It's a fish, you've eaten these things before. The fact that it has a head doesn't actually make it any different from all the other fishes you've eaten. It's just that somebody else has done this to them. Really, shouldn't you be taking responsibility for your murderer's ways? If you find it awkward to eat something with a face looking at you, then maybe you shouldn't be eating meat or fish to begin with. Right, so one side is done. I'm just gonna let this one run in five times speed all the way through. Starting the same way again, an incision at the gill cover and then just following the spine, cutting through the tail and then just getting the fillet away from the bones and the ribcage and all that. 
Now bear in mind, I've never done this before. My technique is flawed and I'm not really the best person to teach you this. But the point I kind of want to get across is that... Don't be afraid to try new things and challenge yourself in the kitchen. What's the worst that could happen? You end up with something inedible? Well, so what? You don't live in the third world. You could just grab something else from the fridge. You're not gonna go hungry if you mess up this fish. It's not really that big of a problem. And obviously this doesn't only apply to fish. I mean, there's plenty of things out there that I'm sure you're too afraid to try. Have you ever made your own pasta? It's very easy and very tasty. You should try it. And you should try filleting a fish. Be bold and brave. Right, so I'm almost all the way through and I think it would be easier to just clip this off with the kitchen here, so I pulled them out again. See, I told you they were useful and multifaceted. Oh, what a great tool. Oh, my check's in the mail? Oh, that's great. How much? Oh, if I mention it again? Right, uh, you should all go out and buy kitchen shears. They are very useful and I think uh, they might cure cancer. That's good. Alright, yeah, great. And there we have it! One butterfly perch fillet! And it wasn't all that hard! Unfortunately, I'd left a few scales on the skin that I have to go clean up, and I did manage to get a few bones in the meat, so I'm gonna have to get rid of those as well, but those are really minor details. Overall, I think this was pretty successful. Now that big orange thing in the fish, I thought that was like the stomach at first, but that's actually the ovarian membrane. This girl was a female and she's full of eggs, or roe. We're gonna be cooking that as well. And there we go, successfully cleaned the fillet. Just gone over it, removed any excess scales or any bones left in it. I'm gonna go ahead and wash it, and we're pretty much ready to cook it. And here's that membrane I was talking about, it's full of roe, fish eggs, or caviar I suppose you might call it. I'm just gonna put this in a bowl, mix it with salt, and we're actually gonna fry it. I never actually cooked roe before, but that's the recommendations I found online, and it turned out pretty well, so yeah, sure, go for it. As for these fillets, all we need to do is add salt and pepper, and they'll be ready for the frying pan. If you want to be a bit more adventurous than just salt and pepper, there's plenty of spices that go really well with fish. You could make a bit of a spicier dish by adding some cayenne and chili flakes to the fish, or you could use curry or dill or cilantro or various other herbs to get a bit of a different flavor profile. But I'll keep it simple this time, just go with salt and pepper. And of course, you could also bread or batter the fish if you wanted to. In a frying pan, we're gonna heat up a little bit of oil along with a large amount of butter. Adding the oil helps the butter from burning and it also prevents some of the splashing that can happen when you have a large amount of butter in a pan. Start with the heat on high until the butter's all melted, then pull it back down to medium high and we're gonna just wait until the butter starts to froth. You'll also be able to hear it when it's about ready, cause it's gonna start sizzling. And once that pan is ready, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the fish. I'm gonna start with the skin side down to let it sort of crisp up and build a nice crust on it. And we're gonna cook it for about 75% on the skin side and flip it over and just finish it on that side so it all gets cooked properly. Now, as you can see, it looks like this fillet is shrinking, but it's actually the skin being pulled tight and the sides curling up. I should have probably made a few cuts in the skin to prevent this, just to let it sort of relax instead of curling up like this. Since we want the skin to crisp up and get a nice texture, I decided to just push it down into the pan to make sure it gets direct contact with that heat. You want to be really careful you don't overcook your fish, because it turns rubbery and really shitty if you overcook it. Really, a fillet this thin only needs a couple of minutes in the pan at most. Now, I probably should have left it on the skin side a bit longer, or used slightly higher heat. I think I had it on a 4 out of 6, I could have maybe had it on a 5 out of 6. As you can tell, the skin isn't quite crispy. It was getting there, but not quite. And combined with the fact that I had to sort of push it into the pan and it was resisting it, unfortunately I didn't get that nice crispy texture that you really want. But that's alright. We're allowed to make mistakes here. Lesson learned, I'll be putting some cuts in and using higher heat next time. I mean, you're not gonna improve if you don't learn from your mistakes, so don't be afraid to make mistakes, how else are you gonna learn, right? And at this point the fish is just about done. You see me testing it here by just taking some of the flesh off and you can see how easy it just pulls away. It sort of flakes off. That means the fish is properly cooked. You wanna make sure to stop cooking it at this point so you don't get it all rubbery. And then, using the same pan we just removed the fish out of, we're gonna fry up this roe. I'm just gonna put it in, try to form it into a small pancake, and we're just gonna fry it until it turns sort of whitish-grey. 
And here you can see that the row is almost cooked all the way through. I'm just gonna flip it and try to cook it on the other side. I'm not entirely sure you need to do that. I mean, you can eat these eggs raw without any problem. You're just cooking them for the flavor, really. So it's up to you how you want to do it. And it's quite difficult to actually flip it since there's nothing actually connecting it. So if you care about your presentation, you might just want to fry it on one side until it's done. And then just flip it over when you serve it. And when it looked done, I just took it out of the pan. And to serve with the fish, I just had a very simple side dish. This was supposed to be a light lunch after all, so... I just sliced up some bell pepper, some spring onion, and half a lemon. And just added it all to a pan. And let it just cook down for a while until the lemons have given up their liquid and all the vegetables are soft. And once all the lemon juice had boiled off, I just turned the heat up to high, just to give it all a little bit of a char. The lemons give the rest of the vegetables this nice caramelization because of the natural sugars in them. If you wanted to, you could just squeeze a lemon in there, but I actually really like the flavor of the fried lemons themselves. The lemons do get a lot softer and less bitter when you cook them like this, but it's still a little bit of an acquired flavor, I suppose. So as I said, if you just want to add lemon juice instead, you could do that, or just remove them once they're done. Oh, and of course, you don't have to actually use bell peppers and spring onions for this. You can just substitute whatever vegetables you have lying around. I just happen to have bell peppers and spring onions, and I know they're a good combo, so I added them, but you're welcome to try any kind of vegetable you prefer. You don't like peppers? Well, obviously don't use peppers. This isn't a recipe. You're not gonna need a list of ingredients to learn anything from this video. I'm not teaching you how to make a dish. I'm teaching you some things about cooking, hopefully. So yeah, substitute whatever you want. You can also serve this fish with rice or potatoes or whatever you want. And that's it. That's all there is to it. It's just time to plate this up. Every plating needs a green thing. And I'm gonna be using chives this time around. Obviously, if this was the summer, I'd be using fresh, but it ain't, so they're frozen. They're still tasty though, and they go really well with fish. Then I just scooped on some of the side dish. I'm not entirely sure what to call it. Is it a stir fry, kind of? Uh, a warm salad? Whatever it is, the veg, as the Brits would call it. The lemon was precarious. What do I do with this? So I just threw it randomly and it landed in a sure, pretty decent place, so uh, that'll do I suppose. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We filleted our own fish and we cooked it and we added a side dish and then we plated it and it was tasty. There were mistakes made along the way, no doubt, but in the end the result was perfectly acceptable. And we've learned from the experience, haven't we? We've gotten better at cooking. We've improved at cooking. And that's the entire point of this series. I hope you have all enjoyed the long overdue return of Impro at Cooking with Dopefish. As per always, please post your comments below. I love to read them. If you have any thoughts or comments or critique or you've spotted any mistakes or think there's something I should improve or if you have any suggestions for recipes I should do or anything like that, requests, whatever you have, give them to me. I will read them all. But I think that shall be it for now. I thank you all for watching. Goodbye, my friends, and have a good night. Or day, or... You know what? Have a good meal. It's not really a well wish, it's just a suggestion. Go have a good meal. Preferably a home-cooked one. Oh god, I'm rambling. And, uh, bye!